Hey, Jared here at XPro Heli. I oftentimes fly over water, like you can see in this surfing video here, or how about the Newport video, or many other occasions. And I know that many of our clients fly over water as well. The XP2 is made out of metal and it will sink straight to the bottom should you happen to crash. And I do know that some of our clients have crashed in the ocean, swimming pools, it happens. So, what have I done personally? This is actually my third version, and the first version, as you can see in this photo, I had the flotation devices attached directly to the arms. Uh, with the second version here, um, I had them attached to the legs. It flew great. I admit it, I love this setup. However, I thought, what can I do to make it even better? So I came up with a new way of doing it, and that was water weenies. I've got the foam on the front. Now remember, the foam does serve a purpose. The purpose is to help with vibration dampening. So whether you have the original foam tubes that were on there or you replace it, make sure that those are on there. Again, they help with uh, vibration dampening. As for putting this on there, easy on, easy off. Um, let's make sure that this doesn't make me a liar. So easy on, snaps right in there. I've made mine with some little slits there, so that way it slides all the way over the metal. All the way over the metal. And I did put some additional inserts in there to help with flotation. As a reminder, this is not going to make your quadcopter float um, as far as being able to land it on and off the water, but what it will do is it will save your unit from sinking in the water. That's the main thing is with this investment, you definitely do not want to lose it. So again, Easy on, easy off, and no ties required. Wham, bam, ready to go flying. Uh, in aviation or boating, you'll notice that green is always on the right and red is always on the left. Uh, red is short, left is short, green is long, right is long. So that's for my orientation purposes so I can see which direction the XP2 is pointing. Now how about answering the question of what happens if you drop your XP2 in the water and you get everything wet? Well, first of all, do not turn it on. Take all your electronics out, put them in a bag of rice for a couple of days, and then go ahead and put it back together. Uh, we've had some success with uh, some clients where they might have to replace an ESC. We've had other clients that have had to replace all four ESCs. Your motors are going to be just fine since they're uh, brushless and they run on magnets. So it's going to be a hit and miss as far as what electronics you may burn out. You may get lucky and everything's going to be okay. So anyway, just a way to protect your investment. And this is how I'm doing it. All right, I hope that that was useful, helpful. And anybody else that has some other ideas, my way is not always the right way. So uh, feel free to share. If you come up with something better, by all means, I'm going to steal it from you and start using it myself. All right. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.